kids. Welcome. It's Mark Miller. Uh, today we're going to be working on the stream loots. Let's see if we can get the top monitor screen up here. There it is right there. Let's get the code out a bit so we can see it. Let's close down the scroll. And that's kind of about where we are. So we were kind of here yesterday. Um, here's what I did. Um, I created a separate standalone uh, project and I moved all of the, I moved all of the, hold on, so let me turn down. There we go. I moved all of the, um, all of the files that were related to Streamloots that uh, were independent of UI down into this space. Um, let's also go out to that Streamloots API piece here. Take a look at that. Uh, somewhere in here we had the sets, which are essentially decks of cards. And I implemented a wrapper around this this kid right here and uh, clicking on schema I basically created a class called file view model set card view model and I created uh, something for the redeem fields even though they didn't have anything here that really explain what's going on I looked at the uh, data coming back from uh, the JSON to figure out what was needed here uh, similarly for redemption limit. This, this one I was kind of able to figure out, but basically what it was looking for is a redemption limit dot configuration dot time seconds, time frame seconds. So it was looking for the ability to grab those. Um, I discovered that anything that was date time, if instead of de de declaring it as a string, like reset at, so look at that. If I, uh, where is reset at? search for it here. Oh, there it is right there. If I just declare it as a date time, it'll be converted automatically thanks to the JSON. So um, Jason's got some intelligence about converting um, the the strings that are coming in here uh, correctly over across to uh, this data structure. Um, similarly, anytime it would say something like integer over here, I would just put in a create declared as an int. Um, with binary, I haven't created as what I would call a good, but it looks like these are goods. And I decided to keep these all strings. So to demonstrate that, let's set Cardmaker as our startup project. Got a breakpoint right there. And uh, let's run it. All right, so we're just calling JSON converts deserialized object on the content. The content is looking like that. And it's basically the list of all the cards. So F10 on that should give me, there you go. I've got 31 cards in that deck. If we drill into one of those, deactivate it at, you can see it's got uh, uh, the time when I last deactivated it, when the time and date time when I created the card, um, that sort of thing. And so that's kind of what we're looking at. There's the set ID. I'm pretty sure that's a good. If I put it in a good, I think it'll come across as such. But I don't think I want to change it in case I want to go talk to the um, talk to the interface. Uh, so let's go ahead and kill the app right there. Let's rename this to call this uh, get cards in deck. Let's give it a string parameter. Call it deck. ID and let's put deck ID here and let's do that right there. Okay, so now I've got this get cards in deck inside my Streamlux client. Um, this is in the card maker space. 
I won't move it over yet, but I'm thinking about thinking about doing that. Thinking about moving it over at some point. Um, this, by the way, returns the uh, needs to return this instead. Let's get this piece on the clipboard. Okay, so that's, we've done that. The first uh, cards in uh, first deck. All right, so we've got one wrapper, get cards in deck. Boom, we've done that. My next goal is to look through here and find another uh, piece to go get and implement that. So that one's done. Um, I think I want something that's like a get sets is what I think I want. Sets. Give a list of cards belonging to a set. I, don't, I want something that says, give me a list of all the sets. That's what I want. Hopefully something like that exists. It does not look good though. Huh. Well, I do have post. I guess I'm gonna to have to keep the list of sets locally here. No parameters. All right, I guess we'll do this one right here. We'll create a post to create a new set and uh, see how that works. Cause we are gonna to need to be able to do that. So I've got set view model, which I don't think I've created yet. I don't have it here. Let's create that class. And let's crop this. So I can get this data in here with me at the same time. Okay. All right, I'm gonna zoom it out just a little bit so I can see things at the same, same both pieces in here. So I'm just gonna start creating the pieces of this right here. I, ID, uh, craftable cards, it's Boolean, uh, this is a date time. So 88 gets me the date time created at default. And uh, URI, I'm just gonna make that a string, I think. What's happening? Oh, it doesn't like the word default. I think I'm gonna have to do that for it to match and work. Or I could change the case. I've noticed that uh, Jason doesn't, Jason uh, deserialization seems to be case insensitive. So maybe I'll do that. Um, okay. Let me choose URL. Lutz is, uh, I'm assuming it looks 
Yeah, that looks like a list. There it is right there. There's the open bracket and the closing uh, bracket right there. So I've got this loot thing here. Let me drop a marker. Let's come back up here. Let's create a new class called the set loot view model. Like that. That's got uh, an ID. That's got an alert. And I'm gonna set it as a string for right now, but I think we're gonna need to change it based on what I'm seeing there. What's going on here? It doesn't really say what the alert is, so we'll have to figure that out. I think we're gonna get an error when we get to here. Uh, we'll keep going though. Uh, created at. And currency is gonna be a string. Wait, it says it's an enum. Okay, got it. Euro or US dollars. So it looks like are the two options there. Deactivated as a Boolean. Got another problem with gift alert, it looks like. No explanation or declaration what that is. So we're gonna have a problem with that, I think. Although I bet whatever we figure out alert type is, gift alert is gonna be the same type. I bet. Uh, image URL. Modified at. Owner ID. Price is going to be a float. Quantity is going to be a float. Set ID. And that looks like the end of the set view model. So we'll uh, hit escape to pick up our uh, marker there. And we want it now a list of those called loots. Okay. Name. I'm not sure what pages are. I'm not sure how they correspond to the site. Published. Published at. Okay, we've got some rarities. All right, that's gonna be a list of rarities. Let's go declare a new rarity view model. Like that. It needs an ID and a profile. Do 
up a marker here. We're going to go create a uh, profile view model. The profile view model. Crop this. Drop this down. We're down to here now. Okay, so we're in the profile view model. Profile view model is going to need a label, a name, a value, a fault, crafting, cost, And a default disenchanting reward. Default to disenchanting reward. All right. So the profile view model is there. That's in profile. So profile is a list of those. So I want a list of those profiles. I don't want to call it profile. <laughs> All right, so there's the this ID matches that one, profile matches that one, and oh wait, it's not a list. There's no brackets here. It's just a profile view model. Let's make sure I didn't mess anything else up. Um, rarity view model though, we need uh, a, a, we do need a bunch of those. So we're gonna come down in here. Rarities. That's it. I think we're, we we got we did that. Resume at almost done. Be able to test it. Tags, tags. What's going on there? It looks like tags is in a list of strings, maybe. and unpublished at. All right, cool. All right, I think we can delete this. Got my set view model. Let's start moving these to their own locations here. Um, let's change this type to stream loots currency. Is that fair or is it enough? Because we're already in the stream loots namespace. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll keep it as it is. Move type to file. Move type to file. Move type to file. Move type to file. Set view model. Let's move that to its own file too. Move back to file view model. Good. All right, cool. So now we got our view models in here. Let's save all that. Let's go back over into Card Maker, Streamloops client right here. We've got this called the Get Cards in Deck. Uh, I want to create something new here. It's going to be um, add, create, add deck. Add deck like this. It's going to have no parameters to it at all. Um, and it's going to call. Bye, baby. All right, Karen is going off for a little bit. She'll be back in a bit. Um, Grace, a new set. So it looks like all I need is that. And it's a post. So instead of saying something like get, uh, there's going to be like a post to async. Request URI is going to be that. What's the data, the content? 
So I've never done this before. I'm assuming it's like a new empty content piece is what I think it is. Is this. I need to fill this out, it looks like, actually. I think that's what my body looks like. All right, let's see what we can do here. Um, so we need to send in content. Uh, this is required requesting request HTTP content. Let's see what we can do with that. Becker is going to be joining us a little bit, I think. It says, uh, I've been looking around at the API. Well, I agree there doesn't seem to be a documented way to get a list of sets. There does seem to be a convention of using get followed by things, whatever the thing is, leading to a list of the thing. Perhaps try on the off chance at some point. And Coding Gorilla says, that's standard restful pattern. And Jetson says, I'll take care of that monkey climbing, clinging on, climbing on the Empire State Building. Go get him, Jetson. Get that monkey. I didn't realize there was a connection between those two uh, fanfares. Uh, what do I have here? I've got... I, I think there's some way to add to it, but I'm not saying what is this, copy to? Mm. Well, unfortunately, I don't know how to use this. Uh, got a post I think I'm gonna need to get a demo, uh, some sort of sample here. Uh, let me get find some sample code, figure that out. Uh, HTTP content is abstract. Oh, I need something descending from it. Okay, good. So let's let me just look at a post async. Post async though is not standard, or is it standard? Standard. I can't remember. I'm using restfulclient.net. I think client is inside of restfulclient.net. Is that right? It's HTTP client. Okay. So HTTP client.post async is what I'm looking for. Let's see, HTTP content. Uh, that's the part I needed. I needed you to show me how to do this. Ugh. Um, where am I get that content? Uh, there's stream content. Byte array content. Okay, cool. Thanks so much. That's what I was looking for. So I need to convert this string into a byte array. Let's look at this. Let's see what we can give me. I still need to go on some example code here. Yeah, I don't want to do the file open. Read all bytes. That's not quite what I want either. Content, it takes a byte array, ugh. This one's someone who's a string to the byte array. Let me uh, come back over here. 
from string. Got a string content. Why not do that? Here's my string content here. That's what I want. All right, let's try that. And let me know otherwise, kids. Handy Stack Overflow answer for you. Oh, you got one for me. Okay, hold on. Let's go take a look at that. Thanks, Coding Gorilla. So it looks like, I know this, at first glance, it looks like I'm like somehow giving the show to you guys as a benefit, but really you guys are just teaching me. I'm, I'm just like going online and saying, teachers, tell me, come watch my show and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Um, the straight up answering question is, the signature for the is as follows. What was the question? Done several examples on the web, I'm going to create this code. Oh, we're fine, but I suppose I want to pass a third parameter to the post parameter called data. Uh, how do I do that without creating the key value pair? Key value pair. Just async content form URL encoded content. Wow. Okay. Ah, uh, you're showing me how to go from any data and then calling get bytes on it and then doing byte array content. I gotcha. What I have to do is I need this thing coming in here like this. Craftable card, loots, name, rarities. This looks like it's the piece that we just kind of worked on. The guy wrote that really new is stuff. Ah, look at that. He sure did. It's coding gorilla. I didn't see that. Gotcha. Well, holy cow. Let's vote up coding gorilla, man. You're at 163, man. Nice. Coding Gorilla, you're famous, man. Okay. So I'm, so having seen that, got it. I love the example. It's excellent. Um, but I'm kind of feeling like I just want to pass in a couple parameters here and set these is kind of what I want to do. Let's go out to the Streamlinks website and take a look at what happens when we create a new deck. What kind of default values we're looking at here. I hate how there's so many buttons. I have to click over on the right and move to the left. And in my collection or manage my collection, I think it's my collections I want to click. No, if it's manage my collections, I'll just be the wrong one. Um, all right, anyway, let's see what we can do here. Where's my, there, create collection now. Create collection. Remember, you have to complete the 10 cards redemption achievement. Do you have access to the future? It's your dashboard for more information. Then I'm gonna delete the collection. Not my, how do I delete it? Okay. Well, that's not good. I can't, I can't move forward. I'm kind of blocked in this direction, unfortunately. <laughs> because of the limitations, I can't delete an existing collection. Maybe if I unpublish it, I don't know if I can do that either. Yeah, delete collections not available to me right here. Why can't I delete a collection? I can't delete, can't create. That also means the call is likely to fail. So we're gonna have to test this later. Does it return anything? It's a response message. 
Can you not delete it because someone on your test users cards or other things from within it? Perhaps redeem them and pause the collection and you might be able to delete it. Yeah, unfortunately, Rory, redemption requires a sale is what is happening here. So that would have to go through and buy the cards as in another ID and then play them to, to get to the point where I can now create a second deck. I don't know. I can kind of do it, but I'm thinking, uh, maybe not yet. I'm going to put it on hold, I think. Mm. And now I'm also thinking about just going to buy them and redeeming them now. This is what, 10 cards I needed? Complete the 10 cards redemption achievement. All right, maybe we'll play with that now for a second. Let me look, bring up another browser that I'm not logged into. Go out to the Streamloads piece. Let's go buy some packs here and redeem some cards. So one pack, I think I probably need a five pack is what I need. Lovely, log in with Twitch. Let me switch it to the other monitor while I do that. Authorize. Wants to know where I'm from. Really? Why do you care where I'm from? Maybe for currency reasons, I suppose. Interesting the order that they're putting this in. Um, let's do that. I'm over 18. Processing my portal data. You can type that in that box to filter. Oh, thanks, Rory. Uh, yeah. Um, I would like to receive streaming news and promotion by email. No, thanks. Let's do a big fat continue. Uh, what do you want to do now? There we go. Try again. Buy some packs. Get a five pack. Five pack. Uh, use the card 15 code. Sure. You betcha. Paste. Check the code. Exclude persons on PayPal. Let's go do that. Moving it off screen. And completing my purchase. And of course, I'm not logged in on PayPal over on this one. Or maybe I am. Now it's just, now it's not just asking me for stuff. Ugh card number and stuff like that. Um, let's go back. Let's close it down and try again. Log in under different. Can I do it? Will it work? Nope, that password was incorrect. That one was correct. And never sent my password. We'll pay with reward points. <laughs> as if I didn't have to pay anything at all. Pay now. All right, I'm sure that was fun for everyone. All right, click to continue. All right, you received five packs is what I've got now. So here's where I'm at. Open the packs. Just gonna click this button. All right, that's one of my packs. So let's go redeem some cards here. Play the card. That's one. Play the card. That's two. Like that that's working. No, I don't have any more cards here. 
And here we go, this one, play the card. It says you don't have any cards available. Buy chests to get more cards. No, I do have cards available. Maybe not of that one. I got another chest, I thought. Here we go. All right, let's play those cards. Can't play that one. Not sure why. I got this one, but it doesn't say I can play the card. Well, there we go. Now I can. Oh, I wonder if there was a, a timeout with that. Cool. All right. Uh, and then I think I got one more. Nothing's happening down here. That's not good. Maybe I just didn't see that correctly. Yeah, interesting. So we get two playable cards, two playable cards here. I'm not happy with this interface right now. Okay, there we go. Now it kind of opens up. I don't think I've got a timeout on these, but maybe I do, and that's why they can't be played. Why this is a, Oh yeah, it's a cooldown right there. I see. You'll be able to use this card when the cooldown expires. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think this is like my 10th card I've played. Yeah. So now I feel like, let's see if we, what, what happens when we go to create a new deck. Um, back over here, create collection. You have to complete the 10 cards redemption achievement. This is your dashboard for more information. Well, I'm kind of on my dashboard, I think. Zero of 10 cards played, get 10 cards to unlock. What do I unlock? Well, really? Zero of 10 cards played? Hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't get this. Let's refresh it one more time. Oh, there we go. Sweet. Nine out of 10 cards played. Much better. Okay, cool. So let's go play another card. There it is right there. There's our 10th card. Refresh. Nice. We're ready to get the most out of Streamlabs. Okay, well, cool. Um, it's all super exciting. Uh, now let's go in here and choose Create Collection. Sweet. Okay, so now we've got the name, the categories. Do we have a Dungeons & Dragons category? We have Dungeons and Dragons as a category. Sweet. No. No. All right. So we know that one of our categories is Dungeons and Dragons. Whoops, I delete it. I'm going to try and copy that text. Yeah, just clicking on it deletes it. That's a little stunning to me. Uh, collection logo. So what's interesting is I can only select one of these. Oh, can I upload something? Sweet. I can do my own for the collection. Okay, my own logo for the collection. Sweet. Chest image. We'll be able to edit the chest image later from the packs and prices page. All right. Here I cannot choose my own chest image. Uh, set its default collection. New collection is only set its default once they're published. Okay. So when we create a new one here. We need a, uh, a name. We need a... Uh, uh, categories.
we need the logo and the chest image. And uh, is it the default or not? So that's what we do when we create a new collection. Does any of this, this looks like this doesn't quite correspond to what's at the top here though. Got a default connection to it. I've got a name. Um, got an image, one image URL. It looks like the set, the deck, what we're calling a deck and what they're calling a collection and what the API seems to be calling uh, a set. Seems like those are not quite there, creating a new set. If I'm up here and I search for the word deck or collection, maybe collection. Oh, look at this. What is a set bin and what is, what's a, what I thought was a set? Here's a list of collections. What happens? Invalid credentials. Let's see what happens. Let's play with this for a second. Too bad, my friend. How are you? I'm, you know, working through my day. Yeah. Working cool. through my day here. I'm just like, you know, kind of looking at squirrels and go, wait, what's that over there? Um, <laughs> it's easy um, enough to get distracted by them. Yeah. So I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm what do I, I got something on the clipboard. I've got that on the clipboard. I want to do that in a second. Um, I think I want that, and then I want this, like that. Okay, now, I just wanted to get this so it was, um, so it's kind of close. So I'm just trying to keep, figure this whole thing out here. Creating a new collection. Can I create a new collection? I don't think I can. Collection gets a list of collections, and post. Collection ID, cards, card ID, restore a collection card. What is that? Card has not been redeemed. Collection card does not exist. Oh, I would just love a little bit of documentation. You know, it's kind of what's interesting about this. It's a very abstract set of documentation. It's like it was completely generated based off the code as it stood at a given time. And there's no meaning that's obviously declared. So you're right, you've got yeah. sets and you've got collections, but you know what they are exactly is a little bit, I don't know, less than tangible. Well, what's interesting is in the, um, when we did the, uh, we came in and we said, oh, how, how many cards are in here? And the, it, when I went and read it uh, in this call right here, we got 31 cards in this, with this particular, what I'm calling a deck ID or set ID. The, yeah. in that set <laughs> there were 31 cards if we come over here to my collection uh where is it i guess it's manage my collection right here um i bet you the third they've got 31 one two three four five six times one two three four five yeah 31 31 cards in the collection so when i ask for or in the set when i say give me this set it gives me these 31 cards Okay, and I've and I've and I've spot checked them. I you know I've, I've seen oh yeah I recognize that I recognize that. Um, 
See, it's, it's strange. You can think of these these terms as sort of super or subsets of each other. So I can imagine a situation where, okay, you, you create a collection of cards. That is, you declare the existence of a quantity of cards. And those are all the cards that exist in Potentia. Then you say, okay, now I'm going to give some of these to a user, instances of them, and they therefore have a collection of them. Or they have a set, or there right. is a deck, and all of these words are kind of interchangeable in English language, but they're going to have to have specific meanings here. So, what's the highest level thing you must do? Is this the creation of collection or, or a collection when you're sort of interacting with it? Is that what you do first? Well, I, I don't really have. So, I think at this point, are we in a break point on uh, this? Looks like we haven't started it. So if we start it, it looks like I need a, I got a problem right here. Um, maybe I'll comment all of this out for now. And uh, give it a return null right here. So that should at least be happy. Okay. Okay, uh, let's run it and I'll, we'll kind of talk about what do we need to do. Meanwhile, I'm gonna open up my uh, design document which is essentially PowerPoint slide deck. All right, so this is what we get, okay? It's, it gives us, yeah. this gives us, a, this is our UI wrapper around the ability to create decks, which are our collections of cards, and then go in mm -hmm. and change the cards, you know, the look of the cards. Sure. Right? At some point, we want to be able to upload the cards from here partially because I'm able to programmatically determine uh, things like descriptions. Yes. I, I don't want to have to go type that in on a website. And I want to be mm -hmm. able to create cards for like all of the, the different spells that are out there and then randomly kind of generate the look for all of these kinds of things, right? With so this is, is very much like writing a class in C Sharp. So we're, we're writing a template for an instance of a card that will be given to somebody at some point. Yeah. It's very much like that. It's going to save the, the image out. I want the image to be able to. Um, <laughs> I want the image to be able to be uploaded. Ideally, if we can mm -hmm. do that programmatically as well. Um, and I want you know to be able to create sets or decks or collections, whatever they're called, that correspond yeah. to each one of these, and upload the cards to that. Because I'm talking so about I like ultimately about 800 to 900 cards that I want to create almost yeah. all entirely programmatically. So I don't want to do any of this work. It's, I guess, what I'm saying. So what I'm trying to work out is whether a collection in this instance is is closer to the C-sharp namespace, which is a place where you put your templates, or whether it's closer to the definition of a list, which is a list of instances of card that I might own. I think the schema has some clue on it. And I, I didn't really look at it carefully over here, but I've got this thing called data and I get a pagination back from the pagination result. And okay. then this is what the structure is kind of looking like here. So I've got a, an ID and a page, and the page has an ID, has a slug, which I'm not sure what that is, has an owner, uh, and avatar image URL, a username in the profile. So basically what we need to do, I think, is create a schema representation, a representation of the schema in uh, in source code. And then yeah. we need to make this call and then deserialize it into our, our our representation of the schema. And then we need to look at the data. And once we see the data, we'll actually get an answer to the question, what I think we'll get more insight into what a collection is. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, I know. It's a little bit like, wait, Mark, really? Wait, you're not? Oh, man. So well, um, so let's paste in that image right there. Let's, uh, let's zoom out a bit and crop it. And get that there so we can use that to build the classes. And I found errors in the schema. Rory, when we were when I was uh, working on this uh, yesterday, and I was okay. like, I was like, uh, or or maybe omissions in the schema. Like we're essentially this is a little bit. Um, well, I don't know. We'll we'll go ahead and do it we'll, as we build this. We'll maybe get a sense of what's going on. Uh, actually, I don't want this here. Um, I want this 
uh, down below. Because we're going to, down below, I've got this Streamlutes um, project now, and I've got all these view models, and so I'm doing my schema view models here. So this is going to be, what do we call it? Collection paginated result. And let's paste that in. Looks like I'm still running, so we'll stop the run. And collection paginated result has got an ID. Like that. And it's got a page, which we need to create. So we're gonna go come in here and we're gonna create a new class called the page view model. Like that, the page has got an ID. So if you're following me, I'm, I'm down here. I'm working yeah. my way down. Uh, it's got a slug that's a string. Like that. And it's got an owner. And I'm going to come up here and call this owner uh -huh. view model. Like that. An owner has got an ID. And it's got a profile. Well, let's go into profile now. Let's create that. Do the profile view model. And the profile, where am I down to here? It's got an avatar image URL. Let's copy that so I don't have to type that all in. So that, and it's got a username, which is a string. Okay, that's my profile. And that's in something called profile. So let's copy that, jump back to where we were. Okay, we were where were we? Hold on a second. Page, I'm gonna have to maybe go back out to page because I kind of lost track of where we were. The page is here. So page view model, right after ID, we need page. So we're gonna yeah. do this. Whoops. Whoops, hold on, hitting the wrong key. Yep, that's what I wanted. And we're gonna call that page. There's page, uh, go up into, to, that, is that right? I'm in the wrong place. You're right. You're right. It's totally wrong. Page has got an idea slug an owner and a type. And the thing that contains the page also has is the collection view model a page ID. I need the collection. Right? Mm. I need collection view model, which did I not do? Wow. looks like I did not do it. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So, collection view model we'll double check everything on this about <laughs> that all right thanks for that is that right question Rory um, well right. it's just it sounded okay but the layout suggests it wasn't but then I don't know that I trust the layout all that much it, oh, this? it's almost like the indent well it, it seems that a thing that has a page should it really need the page ID as well um, you're right that just feels a little <laughs> weird. It does. It does feel weird. Um, uh, when I did this uh, last night, I, uh, I I ended up trusting the layout. I realized, okay, the layout's not bad. There's some things that are wrong with it, but the, the layout, this worked. When I built this up, it worked when I did yeah. something similar in another place. Okay. So, uh, all right. So now uh, I have page view model page in there. Uh, and then after this, I'm going to need to get uh, page ID. So here we have another, yet another ID here, Rory. Uh, oh, yeah. Then we have statistics with two ints inside of it. All right, so let's come in here and we're going to create a new class called statistics. And it's going to have two ints. One of them is called redeemable cards count and the other one is called openable loots count okay those are my statistics
So collection view model has an ID, a page, a page ID, and this piece down here called statistics. And it's got a uh, watched. Yeah. All right. So collections view model is done. Inside that, we've got a page. The page has got this page view model. Uh, let's take this and move it up. I feel like we're missing something here. Drop a marker right there. Um, all right, put that there. All right, so the page is here. Page view model. One of the things that's really important, see this bracket right here and this one here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That implies it's a list. So data is a list of collection view models is what it is. So um, that's important. I'm going to do that right up here. I'm going to say uh, I want a list of those view models and we're calling that data. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, and I also have, so data is that. Then I have pagination. So we have to build pagination next. Let's finish, make sure we've got everything here. So page. Thank you. Page view model. It's got an ID, a slug, it's a string, and an owner, which is gonna be of type owner view model, I think, right? What do I got here? Owner view model. So we got that, that's our owner. Uh, and it's got a type, which is a string, which is actually an enum of three possibilities here. Regular affiliate partner. Okay. Okay. So let's, uh, do this. This is going to be, see, see, that's interesting because that's got the same problem, the same theoretical problem as what I said earlier about page. So it felt like the page ID should have been nested one layer a bit lower so that it was inside of page and type feels like it should be nested inside of owner because it, it sounds like an owner type. So not parallel with owner so much as within it. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm with you. I, but, I, but again, structurally, it seems to say that it isn't. Yeah, uh, so let's look at this. Owner is here. Type is going to be next. So that's uh, going to be right here. Type. Like that. So we've got type. So now I've got everything here in what I'm calling my page view model right to there. Owner gets here. Where's owner? Owner view model has ID and it has profile, which is of type profile view model. And that's all it has. Yeah, what's interesting is this string enum, that's of type, right? This is of this, but because of the indentation, right? These are all together. My understanding is those are all together, this type, but now this, everything in here is inside of it. So anyway, we've got ID and profile there. Profile is, uh, has avatar image URL and username. So I think we have everything we need. I, I've kind of like checked this maybe one and a half times. Not quite a double check, but I think that's correct to there. Uh, and we've got all the way down to watched right to there. That's correct. And then now we're down to pagination. So it uh, looks like we need a uh, pagination. view model. It's going to take uh, cursors and a string. String is going to say next. We need a cursors view model. And that's got something just uh, in it that says after. Just making sure there are no brackets here. The only brackets I see on this page are between here and here. So it's only for the data. The data is the list. So I've got pagination dot, now I need cursors. 
like this. So it'll be pagination, oops, sorry, this should be of that, and that should be just cursors. Like that. So pagination, view model, and that's a type pagination that goes right after data. Right here. And I think it's just called pagination. Okay, I think that's it. Pagination cursors and next in it. Is that right? Where's my pagination? Cursors and next, it does. That does see, indeed match the diagram. And I've, I've checked the live diagram. It, it does have indentation in those places. There's been no copy error that I can detect of any kind. Mm -hmm. So we are matching what they're telling us so far. Oh, well, thanks for that effort. I really appreciate that, Rory. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so let's come back here. We're going to just break these apart into separate files. Okay, down to the end, uh, save all that. Now let's go back to our Streamlabs client. And we're gonna make, we're gonna try, we're attempting the this call right there maybe, I think. So we're going to get a, a string based response or possibly a byte array response and we're going to deserialize that into the structure that we've just indicated. Yeah. That's That'd be I good. Think. That's what I think we might have. That might happen. That's a get call. I missed the start of the stream. Did you figure out how to legitimately log in or are we still using the bearer token from yesterday that still hasn't expired? I can't answer that question without, um, you know, <laughs> you know, kind of presenting a security risk. Implicating to, people. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say anything on that. I'm sorry, Roy. You'll never know. You'll never know. Uh, okay. So we're going to do something here. I don't know. This is going to be called get collections. So what it was, it's called out there that we're working with. Get collections, yeah. Get collections like that. Uh, and there's no parameter here. Content, it's going to be something like this. And then we're gonna deserialize it and we're gonna deserialize it not into a list of this, but into that class we just created, which was this is a collection paginated result, I believe. Right, is that what that comes back in the schema? Yeah, collection paginated result. Okay. Cool. Right like that. And let's do this. There, so it's returning that. And then we're gonna come up here and we're gonna say, uh, get collections, await that. Can I declare a new local? Sweet. Uh, and we're going to do that. So now we're going to set a breakpoint here and we're going to run it. See what data we get back. Oh. Profile view model, that's not good. Hmm. Um, let's go find the uh, original. Does it even compare to this at all? It's not, it's different. Okay, so we're gonna call this the um, collection profile view model. I'm changing these two places. Then we need to go to here and find it. It's in here, there it is. Oops, I thought I, wait, it's not page view model, hold on. Owner view model, here it is. It's collection profile view model. 
No, I thought that's what I called it. No, I thought you prefixed with the word collection. And um, yes. That, but I can't remember what the base version was called. Oh, I have a Oh, two. you left the two on it in the class. Okay. All right, good. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to change this to, uh, I, now that I see what it is, I'm going to change it to owner profile view model like that. Okay, good. Let's rename this uh, file to match the type. And I think that's it. Okay. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> 31 cards in a deck. Now what happens here? All right, ID is null. Data and is zero. Zero count of data. But no error. Well, that's true. So does that mean our understanding of a collection is that there are really no collections at all? Why did the ID come back to zero? <laughs> is username... Let's try this a second. Let's kill it. Maybe this is collections owned by a particular user. So instead of saying await get collections here, these are collections that somebody uses. So that means let's try code rushed because I just bought something and I think I still have some cards left over. Sure. Okay. Good theory. Let's see if that's what a collection is. <laughs> this is this <laughs> well, this is good of... because we get to experiment a little and try and sort of hypothesize and get theoretically real results. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Be and nice just to get some positive from one of these questions. Yeah, so ultimately we're going to create some documentation here, I guess, is kind of yes. what it looks like we're going to go do. Okay, let's see what we got now. Still. Okay. Still zero. All right. Um, it's not my favorite. Um... Let's play in this space because it's a little bit easier to... Well, wait a second. You know what? Let's do this instead. We can still play with this in code. Um, slightly frustrating, but let's go in here and let's do this. Git collections, username. Makes sense to put this here anyway. Okay. Get collections, and now I'm going to say get collections. I don't know. I want to try that. And maybe I want to try this. And maybe I want to try... Um, I want to try and get something. We've already kind of, we know these actually, these two fail right here. I guess this is really my last one right here. But, um, or wait. Well, we are drawing lowercase, I guess. All right, we'll try that. Let's run it, see what we get. See if anything shows up with something different. I've just had a thought. Um... I've I thought of a new conceptual thing that a set or a collection might be. Oh, yeah? So previously, we're talking... The first definition is the sum total of things that can be. So what we would think of as a deck, perhaps. And then there's the things that you might own, the collective set of those things. This third concept is probably familiar to people who play um, things like uh, computer games like Diablo and stuff a, a set, a collection a predetermined group of things which when held have are imbued with an extra set of benefits so it's, it's like a target you know, get a set of three per se and it may be that, that that's another way of looking at it that doesn't really help us because it gives us another option for what could be correct Yeah, uh, we got forbidden on this one Oh. Interesting, isn't it? I'm like, oh, really? But that 
worked a minute ago, didn't it? What, what did we change there? Uh, I changed it to lowercase, and that was essentially it. Uh, okay, so maybe it doesn't rec Maybe it allows for two users with the same um, alpha character set. Oh, but this works. If you though, lowercase, that one really? worked. Nothing back in the, the, there, though. That one worked. <laughs> Why did this one fail? Not indicate success. Forbidden. I'm like not sure what the heck's going on with that. Why would that be forbidden? It's the same call, isn't it? Yeah, it's the same call. I don't get it. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna comment out this for a second and just set a break point, I guess, here. Maybe I'll do it here so we can see the syntax highlighting of the line. Uh, yeah, I, I'm kind of looking for some, you know. A little bit of something, a little something back, a little love back. It's not yeah. easy. Cute success, success forbidden. And what happens if we come down here? Now that's an exception. That means I'm going to exit the app. I think unless I do a set next statement. I think. All right, let's run it here, and then we're just going to get those same results right here. Um, I wonder if it's because if it's something happened on the other end, like because I've I've tried code rushed several times what happens if i do something like this oh, i can't do this with that and continue i think <laughs> try again see if i can get a trigger forbidden on these other calls and that will be a, like a confirmation of what i think is happening here which is saying hey you've tried too many times let's try this that one worked that one worked that one worked what <laughs> that makes no sense at all Unless are we saying that the first attempt to do something causes an exception, and after that it just says, oh, we'll go on then. Uh, okay. Well, let's change it. Let's see if we can run with that. Let's make this one the at symbol and make these without. See what that going on there. Maybe you're right. It's a neat idea. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm used to working with... Um, Shall we say APIs that at least work consistently? And this is starting to look. What? That one worked. The first call worked, Rory. Now let's see what happens here. Yeah. For some reason, they've forbidden Code Rush from getting a. Uh, from getting a. Okay. Uh, although, to be fair. Wait, what is the exemption again? There might be an inner exception here that um, code gorilla says it's because we're calling the async methods in a sync context i'm not entirely sure is that because we're awaiting them rather than but but doesn't that just condense the sort of the request and response but th this into one a, this one worked before when it when it or this one worked when it did not start with the at symbol. But starting with the at symbol, I get I'm only getting forbidden if I'm passing in the word code rushed here. Yeah. If I do something different, I don't know if I can ex do it, edit and continue here or not with that change. Looks like I can. Let's see what happens now. See, it works. It's code rush that's that's forbidden. That's what's happening. That's the, the all indications are that coding gorilla. I'm like I'm like they blocked me. All right, where did we get the bearer token from in the first place? Is that from the Dragon Humpers login and, and use of that in the browser, or did we use the code rush one? Co co wait, hold on a second. I was reading what Coding Gorilla said. I didn't hear you, Roy. Coding Gorilla, give me one second, though. Coding Gorilla says async's voids produce weird results once you get an exception. But I just want to uh. be very clear. Look, when this starts here, I this executes without exception. When it hits, the word code rushed is so far what we've seen. So let, let's see, uh, we'll make this not code rushed, like this, uncode rushed. And I am predicting that when we get, based on what I'm seeing, if, if what I'm seeing is true, it's only when we get to here that I think we're gonna get the exception. Let's just see if that's the case. Okay, one more time. We'll okay. Up. I'm sorry, Roy, did you, I interrupted you. I didn't, I wasn't listening to you. Um, I can't remember. Okay. <laughs> cool. That one worked. 
Okay. Okay. Nothing in it. That one worked. And that worked. Nothing in it, I think. Right? That one worked. And now my theory is, is that this one is going to fail. Wow. And I don't see why. Get Collections is just passing the username right in there. That's the only thing that's happening there with that different text. Is it because I used it as sample data out here? No, it doesn't look like I did. I don't think I'm gonna execute it because I'm getting the 401 and valid credentials and I have to go do the, I have to go bypass yeah. that with the authorization. I was not gonna do that. Maybe I'll do that now. Give me a second. Are we just, are we just um, using something more times than we're supposed to and they just locked us out for a bit? I don't think so is kind of what I'm thinking. I don't think that's it because I tried doing the other one and the other one is not, you know, I couldn't trigger it with the other one. I did it more times, I think, with the other one. It also feels very weird that we'd be allowed to do this with, you know, completely invalid and made up phrases. <laughs> and disallowed on, our, on the one that and actually disallowed on the something. one that should work, yeah. Yeah, isn't that a little bit weird? It's a little bit weird. Uh, maybe it's because without the ad, it's returning a 404 not found, but when you use the ad, it actually finds something that says, no, you can't access this. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking, Cody Rill. I think it's that, actually. I'm, I'm okay. totally agreeing with, with you. I think that the, I think it's actually found something with Coderus because Coderus was the account that bought it. Okay? So that, I think, is the problem. So Git Collections, I think, is, even though we did the work, I'm going to just kill this for a second. I think the piece that I'm walking away from there is Collections is not what I want to be uh, dealing with. It's reminded me of what I was going to ask, which is we're evidently using a bearer token of some description. Yeah. Did we derive that bearer token from the Code Rush account using the web page, or yeah. did we derive it from Dragon Humpers? Oh, is the code rush login on the web page is what it was okay so if anything we should be allowed to to get this information for code rush uh, i think so yeah yeah okay so that's kind of where, I, where i'm at on that um all right give me a second i am uh on the other screen um, hold on getting the bearer token copying it to the clipboard, but I always get scared when I do this. Um, and then taking that into my authorization, authorizing it, and then I'm gonna try and execute again. There we go. So here we go. With the bearer token in, and I go with Code Rush, I get the same 403. Insufficient permissions. Okay? Okay. So if I come in and say anything else, anything else, and execute it, I get that. Okay? See? So it's the same result, results we're getting back. In other words, there's yes. nothing for anything else, but I finally found somebody who has something, and... For some reason, I don't have permissions to actually get the answer to this question. So, I'm not exactly sure why that is the case, um, but uh, but that's that's kind of where we are. All right. Um, okay, I'm going to have to totally get with these guys and get them to fix the authorization authentication because right now this this thing is absolutely insane. I haven't had time to go and actually do any real exploration, but I'm becoming increasingly convinced that they don't have authentication in the traditional sense. I think what they do is, is this thing OAuth2, uh, which is, I'm not going to validate who you are, but I'm going to allow you to point at another service which will validate who you are. They will then give me back a token and we will use that together. So you can choose to validate yourself to prove who you are to either Twitch or to Twitter or to Google. They will then give us something that corresponds with your identity, and we will then operate with that as you as we move forward. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. All right, so let's keep, so let's, at this point I'm thinking collections because of the, that result, 
uh, on collections. I'm feeling pretty strongly that collections is uh, the cards that I own as a viewer. Let's see, do I have that still up? Yeah, here. It's, it's, it's gonna be somewhere, where's that data? Play your cards. That's not a link, really? My packs is where I gotta click, open up the deck. So this is, these are my collect, this is what I believe a collection is. This is your you? Dragon Humpers account now though. No, it's not. It just says it in the URL. No, that's that's where I would go to buy the cards, but I'm logged I in. See. I'm logged in not as Dragon Humpers. I'm logged in as as Code Rushed here. Okay, sure, that's I, fair enough. And, and so if, Dragon Humpers is the shop front, not the user who right, is purchasing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, so yeah. So I got to go into my packs right there. No packs left to open. Where's my card? Suggest card. This is the weirdest thing. How? Why is it not super easy to play my cards? I guess I got to, oh, I see See what's going on here. These are telling me how many of the cards I own. And these are the ones I don't own. So I okay. got to go click on, I got to click the card I want to play. Boom. And uh, then do play card like that. And there it is coming in. All right. Okay. It's got a cool down on it. All right. Uh, so... All right, let's go back. Where's my running app? So the running app, I need to be able to push a card up into uh, a set. That's one of the things that I want to be able to do. Um, yeah. Set. Create a new set. Um, And, and now I think we, that we've done this, we can go try this piece right here. This is what we were kind of working on at the very start and I, where I kind of backed out. It was down here. It was add deck. And maybe I should use the same syntax that they have. Call it add set. Um, And I kind of think what I'm going to do is I just want to kind of create a string here that essentially represents... I, th I think you could, yeah. If you were to create a string with that text and then do a post with that as the body of the post, yeah, this then is... you would be simulating that command. Yeah, look at this. Status of card crafting the, the set. Looks like they've got some comments coming up here. Default status of the set. Array of loots. Name of the set, rarities of the set, image of the set if not present. And this is what's going to be used. What I love about this is the possibility of creating my own custom images for the sets. Mm. Uh, yeah, okay, that. I can do that. I was thinking for the uh, my own custom images for the chests. Because those you cannot okay, create custom yeah. images for. Um, you know, what's interesting about this schema is this is for when we create a new set, but it's different, I think, from the schema that we get. So, actually, let's look at this for a second. What's this update look like? Now look at this schema. Those are the only things that you can change. See, that's a relatively small schema. That might be an easier thing to test. Yeah, that's for updating a set right there. Well, oh, okay, yeah, we sure, we can. We could do that because we do have the set ID, and we can go okay. in and change it. Let's let's go ahead and maybe do that. What, what's the the risk in breaking it? I don't care. Does that cost you a lot of time? No, no I'm, okay. I'm like you can you, you can uh, here. Let's take a minute and look at the great UI over here that we created earlier for the for this. This shows me who gave me the cards. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Nice. Um, all right, let's 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 do this, because I want to get kind of a little bit of something where I'm like, okay, so we're going to go update yeah. the set. Um, 
I've got a quick question for Coding Gorilla since he apparently deals with this sort of thing on a regular basis. Uh, in that example, uh, in, in any JSON that we see, in fact, um, can we exchange uh, double quotes for single quote marks? Uh, as is regularly the case for strings in JavaScript, will, or will that cause us problems? I bet we can. I, I bet you. Because if we can, a quick search and replace would make it a lot easier to build a string. Update set. Uh, is this returning anything at all? <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> we cannot. We have to. We have to use the double quotes. So we're gonna have to uh, escape them, I guess, and then wrap an outer set around it. So, Mike, can I do a task of void, meaning we're returning nothing here? Uh, add this up. Oops, that's add set. I want to get here. Update set. I think I want to do task of void like that. Uh, I think some interpreters will support it, but according to the RFC, it should be double quotes. Okay. That's all right. We won't try and make things more complicated for ourselves, just just in case it breaks purely on account of that. Yeah. Um, all right. I think I want to create a class for this. Uh, I was going to go without it for a second, but now I'm, I've changed my mind on this. So um, <laughs> uh, we'll say uh, update set view model like that and what do we got we've got craftable cards and got a name and we've got a default property a boolean and we've got an image URL, and that's it. Now we're going to go use Coding Gorilla's um, super cool binary. Uh, where is that? Right here. We're going to use this to serialize the object and then call get bytes and pass it to a byte array. Content is what I think we're going to do. Uh, okay, so we've got an update set view model takes those pieces inside of it. Uh, let's come over here. We're going to uh, pass that in. Like that. Then we're going to we got a problem with this void coming back here. Can't be used in this context. Well, just like that then. Is that my, my workaround? I'm not sure. There's an example just above suggests exactly that. Example just above? Uh, in the Stack Overflow page, I think there was a thing that just returned task. Oh, you're just right. Within the answer at the yeah, top. You're right. Okay, great. Thanks, Roy. Okay, uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to do that. Um, Like content, then we're going to go with it's going to be some await client dot put call. Put async URI. Going to be sets dot set up uh, ID. So I need something like this a little bit in here, but with a put async call instead. Put async there. We need the deck ID, which I think I'm going to rename it to set ID. Start using their nomenclature. And then uh, my content is going to be my byte content. I think that's correct. Now sounds good. I think I just need that. 
And I think I need that. That's what I think I need. And I call to update the set. Set. I do. You got the update data. That was it. Let's get serialized in my content. My content gets turned into bytes in the buffer. The buffer gets passed to the byte array content. The byte content then is passed. Yeah, that seems good. Then we're going to use the update set view model. We're going to create a new one of those. And what are we going to do? We're going to say name is equal to uh, my new name. Suckers. Or maybe just like uh, kids. Like that. Uh, okay. And so there's my name. Anything else I want to set in there? Craftable cards, I think, is a Boolean. I almost feel like I should initialize that to true by default. But um, what else do I got in here? Default. I don't know. I guess I'll say is equal to true. And image URL. That's a little tricky, but what if we said, let's go find an image, actually. Any image, anywhere. Google's logo. <laughs> actually, I tried that once. Google don't put it up as an actual linkable image. They put it as an embedded thing because they're so good at their optimization. All right, so let's do this. Let's grab uh, this way. Copy image address. Let's just try it out. There's going to be, that's what we'll use. Okay? Yeah. Let's see if that works. Uh, okay, so we've got that collections. We're going to. We also know that this means the username is without the at symbol on it. Is what we know is for the collection result. I'm going to comment that out as well, and I think we're going to okay. run it. See what happens. See what we get back. Meanwhile, let's go over here to. Uh, probably better to go on the this page right here. So this one's called the level one deck right now. Okay. Level one deck. So we're looking for so that. So we might change. just change the name. We might blow it away in favor of our new one, or we might have nothing happen at all. Yeah, no, you're right. And I'm also looking for a change in this image icon as well. Yep. Right there. Although I wonder if, let's go look at this a second. Manage collection. Nope, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to edit collection. Yeah, they need better terms here. Collection categories doesn't seem like something I can add. Collection logo, change image. And I can do anything in here. The one I, so I can change it back later if I like that, want to go with that image. Somewhere I figured I had that image. Maybe I deleted it. No, I deleted it, but I can upload it again. It's not a big deal. Uh, okay, so let's run it. That's my problem. Okay. All right, here we go. So there's my content after serialization. Looks pretty good. Buffer, mm -hmm. there's my byte contact. There's a call to put a sync. And no problems. All right, let's go over here and go back. Try refresh. Uh oh, it didn't change it. Hmm. We got no exception coming back, and it didn't change. Well,. For, this is we called didn't... collections. This is so. Here's this is the thing, Rory. My collections, yeah. I think, is different from the collection. I think the word collections used here is different from the word collections in the API. Um, the, and yeah. I and I still don't know what a set is yet, right? Because because <laughs> we we just went in here, we changed it. It's like crazy to me. We didn't try to capture any result from that put async, did we? I'm about to do that. So I'm going to make the call to update set first. Maybe we'll do this. We'll do that first, and then we'll do it second. So we'll see before and after, just in case. So 
Although this is just straight a list of cards, though. Get cards in deck. There's no real get on the set or the, on the set, though, I mean. That's what I'm saying. There's nothing that says, here's what the set is looking like, right? Uh. Is there any reference to the parent set? Set ID. Well, it has that. The parent set ID, that's it. Yeah, so we, we, you're right. We have no way to, to check on this. Let me stop it a second. Um, a lot of, I don't know if I'm calling these dead ends, but a lot of like open, we're kind of like stopped here a second, uh, ends here. Let's um, create a new set. That's what we tried to do. Oh, no, is that yeah. right? No, we didn't. We didn't create a new set yet. No, we were doing. We put did called put, which is supposed to update the set. There's no, yes, because oh, we already had a set ID, didn't we? You were saying something earlier, Rory, about how we can do a get on it. Yeah, I mean, it's, here's the thing. We, we could argue that the documentation was generated or created at a point where, you know, that the API itself was less complete, and we can look for patterns. Now, Conan Gorilla sort of backed me up, uh, to a degree at least. Um, I, I've noticed that for a lot of the other sort of nouns, if you like, there's a get which is forward slash thing without a trailing forward slash. And that typically returns a list of whatever that thing is. Let's do it. And I wondered if we could just guess our way to trying that. Let's do it, and man. maybe it'll work. <laughs> All right, so a set is going to be this. Well, wait a second. Not set card view model. What's a set? We don't have a schema for it. So I guess we're gonna have to build the schema out of what we the call to the get is what I think we're gonna have to do. Let's try uh, something like this. Let's go in here and we're gonna say, uh, just return a task for now, uh, get sets like that, passing nothing in. We're gonna call this, and we're just gonna call get sets like that, right, Rory? Sure. Without the trailing backslash, just like without you said. the trailing Whoops. one, yeah. Let's scroll that up a bit, uh, and then we're going to uh, we'll we'll need to figure that out. What we get back from that? So you agree with that? We're going to just. I get think that's content. it. Yeah. I mean, we should get a string, and I mean, it's either going to be no, you can't, or here's a result. And with a bit of luck, if it's that second thing, we can make maybe some sense of it. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Let's see if we make some sense of that string. Okay, here we go. I like that. Okay, data you have no data, no pagination. So that, that's, that's quite nice in a way. That says, I'm giving you a list, but it's empty and there are no pages of it. Yeah, do you think that's authentication? I think. Or no. See that. I think that's good. Well, I, I find it hard to believe it would give us an answer of any kind if we weren't allowed, right? So I think we, we're authenticated. We're allowed. It's just that from the point of view of the API, the answer here is zero items. So zero sets. Okay, but we do when we call this. Wait. We call this get, we get 31 numbers back when we call that. Okay. But let's, oh, right, for the specific ID. Yeah. So uh, that that's why I'm, right. I'm expecting at least something. <laughs> there should be a one item, shouldn't there? Oh, dear. What if sets are like an optional way of grouping things and we just don't have any sets yet that are right public and they've got an, an, this oh. hidden one that we kind of, Exposed because we learned the set ID inside the browser, is is what I recall we did. Um, oh man, come on, help me out here. Give me something to bite onto. I'm like, yeah. I tried like five different things to try to get some traction this morning. <laughs> they, they all sounded plausible at the time, didn't they? And yeah. None, none of them have given us, should we say, congruent answers. Things that make sense together. Yeah. Let's maybe look at these a little more carefully here. Update one or more. So where's update set cards partially? 
a list of cards belonging to a set. We totally get that. And our call to gets doesn't do it. Do you want to try another call to get to see if we can find things like pages or me, I guess, or loot orders? I mean, if any of these nouns made sense within the context of using the, the web or the, the web app, I, I target those. Now that we've, we've come across the concept that we thought of sets and of collections and of cards. So, you know, they kind of all make sense. Is there any other interactive piece that you've seen that has a matching noun? Yeah, uh, not. I haven't looked at it carefully, but I need to. I basically need to be able to to add a card to an existing set. You know, yeah. that's that's maybe the next thing we should be looking at is because ultimately I want to be able to do that. The, the, but this is called collections. We, let's look at collections a second and see if we can go, do a get call. Did we already try this on collections? Um, we did... Collections itself, yeah, there we go. Retrieve a list of collections. Username. Yeah, no, that's the username thing. <clears throat> what if we tried it out with So that's you? interesting. That suggests a collection is owned by a user rather than by you, the person administrating. Yeah, yeah you're right. If I do nothing... Um, so that's the my collection that the code rush user has that's the one you're talking about if we do that we'd expect to get one item back is that right yes you mean if i put in code rush here right that's when i get the 403 error right oh. there's the response if i put nothing in it at all what do i get no username i get this back uh, why did I get Captain Robear? Oh, I think I understand this. I bought a Captain Robear collection of cards to try it out under the Code Rushed. I'm sorry, under the Dragon Humper's name. I'm pretty sure. So for okay. this to work, I can give it no username. And it defaults to you. And it returns the actual data because um, uh, it's it's what I own and what I have my authentication to get data does it, back for. Does it work the same if you put the phrase Dragon Humpers in there? It does. It does. So it's it's effectively filling it out for you. Yeah. So, so it, you, as the Dragon Hoppers person, are allowed to ask for your own collections, but apparently are not allowed to ask for somebody else's. Yes. Okay. So you know what? Uh, I think that's an important thing that's going to go into our documentation uh, file right here. Stream loots <laughs> documentation. And we're going to say, uh, get collections. Oops, not there, down here. Get collections. Um, have authorization, authorization token that matches who you are. So uh, if my auth token is for uh, the, the DH account, then I can only get the list of collections for me. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Okay, so that is, at least we got one of these documented. So there's get collections right there. Um, close that down. Collections also got a, got something called post. Restore a collection card. I'm not sure what that does and Oh, I wonder if I've spent it, a card, if I can go back and 
story. I'm not sure about that. That would make some kind of sense. So you, you've bought it in the first place, and now you have it, and you spend it, but the guy running the stream goes, ah, actually, that wasn't working. Oh, we'll give it back to you. So it's yeah. kind of an undelete or unuse. That's what I think. Um, okay. Okay, go kill you. Yeah, no, I got that, Rory. Um, thanks for that. I am, I'm, cool. I'm going to have to talk to those guys uh, and get that all resolved. Yeah, no, I'm like, I, I, I noticed that too, and I'm just like, Ugh, come on. Can we get this card off my face? Um, yeah, I can do that. Sorry about that. Let's go over here. Boom, boom, like that. There you go. Oh, we, maybe we can play it. There we go. Sweet. All right. Cool. Yeah. Dance party coming up. Uh, all right, so let's go through this. Alerts, uh, I don't think I need that. Admin files, uh, doesn't seem interesting to me. Collections, mm -hmm. those are what users, these are what the users own. Yes. These are the cards that the users own. Okay. Right, so, so a sub set of the available things which we as orchestrators create yeah so we'll have purchased this is the, these are cards that the users have purchased okay um all right so that's what a collection is coupon uh i can only get coupons i'm not sure what's going on with there retrieve a coupon um streamlips is hiring maybe i should go work for them and help them <laughs> shape up this api I'll take it. I've often yeah. I have fantasies all the time of like you. when I'm up against like you know whatever. Sometimes this happens with Visual Studio or or um, you know anything I'm trying to, to, to come up against. I have I have mm -hmm. fantasies of applying for a job without telling them that I'm really only going to work there for a little bit to You're figure gonna be the mystery coder to figure it all out. Like solve, the mystery shopper, solve the problems, <laughs> unbreak me, and then quit. That's what I'm going to do. Um, <laughs> Files seem uninteresting to me. I don't think a file makes sense to me. Heartbeat, I don't care about that. Invoices, loot orders, I don't really care about that right now. <laughs> me, retrieve the current user, update the current user. No parameters. Yeah, see, I think this is all around the idea of not quite auth, so it's how we'd get our bearer token, maybe. Yeah. Uh, but since we have one that's sort of working, yeah, I don't know that it's of, of such huge interest yet, unless until we want to sort of be other people. Yeah. Um, so all the me stuff, I don't think I really care about that. Retrieve the current user stripe, card payment methods, uh, the current update, yeah, update the current user profile. So I don't think we want any of the me stuff. Uh, notification in app insertions. I don't know what that is. Retrieve a list of paginated, retrieve a paginated list of pages. That's very meta. Provider to discover a new screen, slug to filter out pages. Because I don't, I'd normally think of pages as kind of the generic type that would require some specific. Not, not the, you know, you can get an abstract list of pages. That's, that's a little. Yeah, I'm not exactly okay. sure what this means, what this is. Partnership application. This does not feel right. I just want I want to be able to add cards is all I want to do. So I don't think pages are what I want either. Pages with suggestions, partnership applications. And pages. It's interesting that card is not an item in this list, which I means know. it can't survive outside of the context of the set, I think, is what we've seen, isn't that? Yeah. Uh, partnership applications, promotion files, sets, wizards, an onboarding wizard, created a, a set and set card from onboarding, send test to page alert provider. I wonder if the wizard is the thing that the pages sit within, because I, the concept of pages within a wizard is sort of step one, step two, step three. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Frames. Literal frames, like the exterior of a card? I think that's what these are. That's exactly what I think they are.
Yeah. I think these are for custom frames. That's what I think the, the these pieces are. It's not the first thing that's alphabetically out of sequence. Because everything up until this point... Ooh, I don't remember that. Ah. I'm not sure what happened with there. Uh, yeah, it's looking fairly uh, alphabetical up to wizards. Then we get to frames, goals, tags, templates. Okay, this is a template for a particular card option, I think. I don't, these are related to cards, but mm. again, they're not, um, I don't think they're cards. You need a template card. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's driving me a little crazy. The, <laughs> like, what do you want to bet the word card here isn't the same as card <laughs> that we want? I think relying on it to be the same would probably be a mistake. Okay, so now we're down to. We're down to, uh, this is a Swagger Open API document, so the alphabetic part was probably like the original draft, then they came back and added the newer stuff to its end. Yeah, that's what it felt like, too. feels a little okay. bit like that to me as well. <laughs> Excuse me. Do we really have no ability to add a card? Let's go look through sets a second here. When we do the sets, we call get, we retrieve the list of cards belonging to a set. One more new set cards. This is, I think, it. And I think we already have the set card view model. Do we have that? What do we have? There it is. So we have set card view model already. It looks like we got some classes we need to move out. Okay, so set card view model. It's got all of these deactivated description. Yeah, description detailed. Yeah, so we've already got this. Uh, do we have obtainable in here? Yep, we got obtainable right there. Set ID status ends with that. Yeah, it's all looking good. Reward fields. This is where I said the, the, the pieces weren't working. The, the schema was empty. Re redeem fields is, is this uh, these brackets. Mm -hmm. And uh, by looking at what was turn, returned back, I built this. Okay. So we've got this. So this may be creates one or more new set cards. This might be the way in to try and see if we can do this. Okay. The problem, though, that we're getting is that set ID. Sorry, when we call, do we have a get well, sets? We don't <clears throat> have a get sets yet, do we? Or did we try it? Well, we, we got a successful call to get sets without the trailing backslash. It just didn't give us any data. We called get sets. Yes, it came back empty. Well, I say it came back empty. It came back with a paginated style data, which is it, it told us that there were no pages and no data, but it did explicitly tell us both data and pagination. Right. But they were, those were both empty. Yeah. Um, it didn't out and out say this makes no sense, it, it, but it didn't give us data either. Yeah, let's try the post. This is my last attempt here. I'm, I, if this doesn't work, I'll be trying. I'll be contacting uh, Streamlit support and see if we can uh, resolve this and figure out what's going on. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right there. The post um, with it. Uh, let's do a. Um, 
We can add card. Maybe add cards like that. Do post async. Need that set ID in there. And get that up here. The tensor stuff in Postman 2 might be easier. Yeah, I don't know. I'm like, I'm just like, ugh. All right. All right. Shout out to you coming in. The other piece that's coming in is um, set an array of set card view models. Which kind of makes sense. Like that. Then we're yeah. going to get that uh, amazing code uh, right here, which I think we want to call this, uh, we want to extract this, and we're going to call this uh, to bytes, maybe? That's currently taking update set view model, where we've got set card view model is our one, so we want to abstract the type that can go in there to an object. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, to serialize bytes. That's what we're going to do. And we're going to come up here. And we're going to throw the new cards at it. And then we're going to pass that in there. Come on. There. And uh, I'm not sure what the what else we need there? Well, we just need to, next we need to now add it, call it. Yep. Uh, let's call it get new cards. Let's clear that. All right, and then we're going to, we want to create a new card model. All right, now we got some options. Whoops. Some things to, to do. Let's say name is equal to uh, my new cool card. Um, action type is equal to what? Wait. It's just a string. Uh huh. I thought action type. Oh, it is just string. Uh, I almost feel like it's an enum that's not documented. I feel like the doc. I feel like we're. I bet this is totally an enum. Uh, that's what I think it is. But so I'm not going to specify anything for the action type right here. Um, let's also do one more thing. Let's say. Let's do this. Let's make a call to get cards in deck first. And. And down here we're going to say results uh, dot add set card view model and then return result. Okay, so we're going to first get the cards in deck and we're going to take a look at what those okay. are. Then we're going to come in here and set some of these properties based on what we see in case it looks important. We could also just throw this at it too, I suppose. Right. So we, we could also just take like the first one or two cards that are quote in the deck and just use those as the card that we pass as the new card for the set. 
Sure. We don't actually have to invent a new card necessarily. We can just pick one from the available set in the deck. Yeah, you're right. We could totally do that. Um... I mean, it's a little tricky if we can't actually go look at the set to see did it did it work. But let's do that. Let's do. Call maybe get first card in deck or, or random card from deck. <laughs> I'm gonna do like a prototype kind of idea here that we'll we'll base it on on one of the cards that we pass in here. So get new cards. We're going to come in here and say, hey, look, if this dot length or count rather, sorry, this dot count is greater than zero, then we're going to add cards and we're going to pass in uh, the, the first one as the mm -hmm. get new cards as the prototype. Right. Uh, I think we need an await here. Like that. Uh, we're going to do this, and then we're going to say uh, this is equal to. Well, we just come down here and say prototype dot name, and then add prototype. Because the theory in in this case is that we now have a legitimate Data. card that is yeah. that is good in all the other ways, but hopefully we can just modify its name and. Yeah. I'll see an effect. Yeah, so that's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to do that, add it. It's going to re re uh, return that list of those with only the one entry in it. And hopefully we'll see a my super, my new super cool card. If we that get would that, be awesome. Yeah, if we get that, we're like, oh, okay, we got some traction again. Yeah. yeah. All right, so step over that. Should get us uh, the 31 or whatever we've been seeing. Come in here. Uh, fine, there's the name. And so now my prototype, just open it up. We look at it. Action type is event. Yeah, that totally smells like a... Um, an it e does, doesn't it? <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and we got an image URL as well. There it is right there. Oh, it's got a normalized name, the Puppet Master. So this is control. It. This was based on something originally called Puppet Master. So we should see mm -hmm. that. It should look a lot like that. Um, whoops, hold on a second. I saw something that looked like a, a GUID. Oh, uh, yeah. Set ID is there, but I think at the top, there. I think we're going to have a problem here. Well, that depends. Um, option one, we need to provide a genuinely new card because we are creating a new card, in which case the ID needs to have a new value. Option two, we're supposed to be passing a card that exists in a deck already to make it part of a set, in which case we need to use the legit existing ID. No, no, I don't think so. This is a call to add cards, right? Which is calling sets All right. ID cards, which I but, thought is... But let's, let's presume or hypothesize that you've got a deck... And that what we're calling a set is, in fact, somebody's hand. Right? So we're adding a card from the deck to somebody's hand. Yeah, I don't think so. That's the other possibility. I, as I, well. At this point, I believe the set here is what they're calling, I think, a collection there, which is what I'm calling a deck, a deck of cards. Okay. In which case, you're right. We, we shouldn't well, be able to add something that's already there. Yeah, that's what and I'm we thinking. we do not have a different ID. Fair enough. So I'm thinking what we need is something that says ID is equal to, and we need to say like good dot, why don't I have good in here? Good dot, what is it? Is it new good? Um, to string, maybe? Let's see what happens here. I thought there was another a good dot from or a good... Yeah, I don't want that. Uh, what is it? It's GUID. Is it the static, uh, just the class GUID.NewGUID? I thought it was, but I hit, I'm hit. i hitting control space here. Nothing is coming uh. up. What's going on here? I don't understand that. Instruct GUID. It should have an empty I should be able to see. All right, hold on a second. Do we have code There's rush? something else in scope that is... IntelliRush is on. Let's turn off IntelliRush. Okay, 
Got to cover a spit issue. Let me go report it. Issue start. All right, kids, look at this. Uh, you can roll back about uh, 30 seconds as well. Control space shows me this. Let's turn on IntelliRush. Control space, nothing. I see nothing on that. Turn it off. Good dot. I see good, new good, which is exactly what I want. That's the issue. Uh, take a look at that. Whoops. That's Arguably, all the legit items there are static ones as well, so I think that may be the related fact. Mm -hmm. Fails to show uh, static items in IntelliRush. Figure out that, kids. That seems really important to me. All right. Dog food and code rush uh, almost every day of the week. Uh, all right, so we're going to say new good dot two string like that. So let's go mm -hmm. execute this line of code. And now we've got an idea that is, oh, it's got these in it. Uh, I want to remove those dot replace. Can I do that? As a character, I can't. How do I replace? It's not a replace. It's a. Is it's the second second uh, parameter optional? Oh, maybe. Let's or maybe remove. Yeah. Let's see if that works. No, looks like it's going to be removed. Remove and that. Let's we'll we'll try again. Come back up here. Pudding. No, no, no. This is a really bad time. Pudding. Wait, I'm late to my show. Two string N. Oh, I'm going to try that because I got an exception right here. I don't even understand what start index is. Why well, I'm having an exception in there. But we're saying two string. I was thinking that might be there. Uh, yeah, thanks so much for that. Let's do that. Let's do this and see if we get that. Uh, looks like I'm getting purple underlines underneath here. I think, does it not like us editing it, given that we've already got the exception? That's the format right there. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I think we're going to... Oh, no, it's okay. You're right, Roy. Something like that. All right, let's see what our idea is there. There we go. So now let's okay. see if that works and run. And so now if we go to here... Oh, I always hit the wrong button here. Manage is the one I want. We should see. So Puppet Master is what First we started. First item is Puppet Master. Yep. Oh, it's not here. No additional cards. Uh, All right. We're going to want to see if there was any kind of return from that request. Okay. Thanks for that, Rory. Let's go do that. Get new cards. There's the call. Add cards. This is what we want to be looking for right there, right? We want to yeah. query that thing. Okay. Run. All right, here we go. There's the call. Bad request, 400. We, yeah, okay. I mean, that could be anything. <laughs> that 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 could be something as innocuous as sorry, no, you can't just pull a GUID out of nowhere and just declare it's an ID. Um, yeah. Maybe if it's if we leave it blank, it will you know, it decide on a legit ID for us. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Um. Where's the content of the some, message? I'm trying to. Oh, there it is, right there. Deeper level data. Content length. I just want to extend the results view. Yeah, I don't know. All right, I've got here's string value. Ugh. All right, fine. It's making it hard for me to see this. It's a stream I can't visualize. It says coding gorilla. All right, fine. Well, I can kind of visualize it. I'm seeing this response message showing up in here. Something's decoding, yeah. yeah. But I can't see the whole thing. Well, maybe if I do this. 
copy paste into Notepad. <laughs> uh, that might be the end of it, though. Yeah, it looks like the end. Oh, Cody Gorilla's got some code there for us. Response content, readers string async, get a way to get result. Of course, why didn't we think of that? Yeah, because we're dumb. Well, I'm in. <laughs> I'm like, all right. Let's I'm do it. right there with you, man. <laughs> I feel that. like this API is beating us about the head. Well, yeah. All right. So here we go. Let's go in there. I think it's going to be the same as what we kind of just scrolled through, but let's see what we can get it. Set next statement. Um, well, that's more useful. Something something is required. Um, message auto complete. Wait. Drop limited is required. Fragmented is required. Order is we 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 apparently did not pass sufficient things. Mm, I disagree. I think. Well, I don't know. Well, you can wait to see that was for the immediate window. Okay. Um, thanks, uh, Cody Gorilla. Uh, so autocomplete is required. I'm pretty sure it was. Let's close this down. Let's go. Uh, let's just put that in here. I mean, I guess we were making a presumption that the data we got out of the cards from the deck was inherently good enough to pass in here. Um, Maybe that's not entirely true. Yeah. Um, so hold on. We have, I just want to kind of format this a little bit. Actually, I think we've got a JSON former formatter online. Let's go find that and format it. Um, go. Cool. Where's my copy button? No copy button, apparently. All right. Let's copy that. Come back over here. Okay, so autocomplete is required. Drop limited. So these keys at the end are all the same of the piece that is that is that is incorrect. Um, yeah. All right. So let's go look at the, the, the data. It's right in here. Uh, autocomplete is there. It's got a value. Wait, is it? Yeah, it's the same same case and, and everything. So autocomplete is definitely there. It's false. I don't know if that means it needs to be true. Drop limited is required. Let's see what we got there. It's false. Um, go scroll for order. Order sounds like a numeric. Is that a zero? Yeah, order is required. Because I'm wondering if our serialization isn't looking at false and zero and just deciding to remove them because they're sort of default values. Order is one. Okay. That maybe isn't such a legit theory then. Rarity is required. Oh my gosh, guys. Give me something here that I can like push against here. Epic. Rarity is epic. It's correct. It's there. It's a value. Rarity card probability redeemable. So it's a validation error is my problem. I, I feel like this again is like got to go, you know, find these guys. Uh, it'll only remove null values if you have okay. it set to. And I think the default is not to make nulls. And in any case, the word epic is in no way a null or a default of mm -hmm. any kind. And I'm pretty sure that it wouldn't get removed. Yeah. So, although being told these things are required, we, we have a reasonable case to say we're supplying them. Yeah, that's my sense. That's exactly my sense here. The cards is a list of the cards. We're serializing the list. Oh, dear. Uh, let's double check. 
I just want to... Any chance that we have the wrong case for these things and therefore it's not being recognized as present? No, I checked already autocomplete and matched. I'm pretty sure these 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 pieces are okay. all there. We can look at drop limited right now. It's got an uppercase L. Uh, drop limit is there. Oh, drop limited. That looks like I... That was there name. too, also with a capital L. Oh, you're right. It's right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Where was I headed? I was going over uh, to the API. Do I just not have the API up on here? Is it on another page? Here we go. Um, creates one or more new set cards. Error codes. Set not exists. I feel like I have to reach out to the developers at this point. Um, mm. Their example, you know, error results are uh, bad request, unauthorized, or forbidden, but they don't have what we're encountering. Um, no. Well, hang on. 400 is bad request. That's what oh, we were getting a right. 400. You're right. This it says source um, not set not exists. We definitely got source set exists. That we got. Yeah. That's what we've got. Yeah. So, um, and I was just going to come out here and look at this. We, I kind of, you know, did a, sh a check on it, but there's drop limited right there. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I feel like what we're looking at is a like a an erroneous error message. An error message is that's telling us we've got one problem when we really don't. Um, I guess the other thing yeah. we could do is we could try just creating a string and pop it out there and give it to it. Maybe since you're not specifying that it's JSON, it assumes it's something else. How do I specify oh, it's okay. JSON? Something like um, there's a content type header. So um, in the same way as you add a bearer to the header, I think is how we did that. Um, you can add, it's a key value pair of some kind. So I think just content type is the key. Uh, the value is going to be like a, um, what's the phrase? You know, like you have um, app slash XML or, or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I get that. Let's see what we can do in there. Uh, application, application slash JSON. Coding gorilla with the winning answer. Like that. That's what we think it's like. Content type. Uh, he's got a hyphen in his content type, but I don't know if that's. I don't see. Who's he on this? Uh, coding gorilla. Three messages from the most oh, recent is, is. content type with a lowercase t. All there right. we go. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's try that. That's awesome because guess who never would have guessed that? <laughs> you, me, me, and, uh, and no Fred. Have, yeah. <laughs> uh, misuse header name. Doesn't like this. There's with the response headers, content headers, content objects. Make sure request headers are used with HTTP request message, response headers with HTTP response message. What is that? You might have to do it on the request. It may not be supported as a default header. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. That's cool. Uh, so that means it's going to be, based on what I'm seeing here, it's going to be a uh, request header instead of a default request header, I think. Um, is our That's request? It's embedded a little lower. Add cards right here. So we're going to say, um, well, I'm not sure where do we do it. We do it. We still have to do it on client, I think, right? Client dot mm. request headers. There's only this. Can I do the same line of code there on the content? Is this inside the post async? Is it making that? And then firing it off. Holy cow. Holy cow. Oh, wow. Okay. I just learned something new. I love it. Look at me. I'm getting better. I'm becoming a programmer. Cool. All right. I just want something to work, man. 
This, this is where everything works this. perfectly. Yeah, Cody Gorilla, thanks so much for your help on this. I just Absolutely. Hit I hit run. Okay, we're here. Let's look at the results of that. Still, shoot. Bad request. Uh, to make some me sad. More errors. Hang on, that's the that's not. Oh, here we go. These are better errors. I'm a big fan of these. Hold on a second. These are great errors. I'm loving these. These are like gonna make me happy. I can work with these errors now. All right, cool. Oh wow. Um, let's uh, paste those in. We're gonna replace this with the the new data. <laughs> Pudding says only people who code would consider such things as better errors. <laughs> <laughs> there are no. This is awesome. We can move on but this. We got tracks. He's right, here. and this is genuinely more useful. Yeah. Okay. So these must be different. This must be an object. ID is Some not allowed. Useful constraints. Check this out. So there's a. It's a different data structure going up than coming back. Yeah. I love actually that ID is not allowed. Uh, I'm ha really happy with this. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, it is a legit thing. Allowed, archives not allowed. That makes sense because these things shouldn't be pre-activated or archived. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you also, Coding Gorilla. Ideas uh, auto-generated. Yeah, so that's awesome. Awesome. Okay, so what we want to do is we need to create like an... I need to grab all of these and create an ancestor class that it does not have these properties in it. That has all the other properties but these. Yeah. Uh, this is sweet. And then we'll serialize that. Oh, yeah, those are all easier to fix right there. And then we're la left with these pieces here. Uh, fragments, this looks like an incorrect error to me, though. Fragments, unless it was set to, if it was set to, that's really, fragments is the number of, of, of pieces of the card you need to collect. So I, I'm, I like, I'm like, no, right. I don't want to make it so that you, you have to keep collecting to put something together. Um, we'll come back and fix this in a second. What I want to do uh -huh. is go to set card view model. And I want to create a new class called update date uh, card view model like this. Let's uh, give me that thing in here. And we're going to say... Um, Just get these all listed in here. Image file is not allowed. Are we excited, Rory, that we're like, you know? I, I think this is this is good because, I mean, it, it shows, well, it's more information, all right? And, and it's information that looks legitimately helpful. Okay. All right, so those are the pieces that... Um, that we need in the descendant to keep down in the descendant class. So I'm gonna drop a marker uh -huh. up here because I'm gonna go, go back and forth between the two of these. Uh, so uh, this, everything here uh, in this list stays in the descendant. So ID is there. Then we go take this one, bring it up, paste, come back down. Um, let's do, let's drop that, get out of the way so we can see a little bit more. Um, Let's go continue down. We've got activated at, archived, autocomplete. The next one that goes up here. Uh, back on URL, created well, at. Just as you get into the swing of that, Mark, I'm afraid I'm going to have to leave you because my time is up for hey, today. Thanks so much, Rory. I appreciate um, it. No trouble at all, my friend. I, I think it's nice to see that as I leave, that you're on a you're on the right track again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. All right. It got drop limited. It can drop happen. Limited. Thanks so much, my friend. All right. Worst case, I will see you on Tuesday. Okay. Okay. Thank you so Have much. Have a good one. Bye. See you soon.
So we've got drop limit remaining. First activated at frag minted. I can bring up fragments all the way to image file right there. I can't have an image file. And come say the day we again. I guess come save the come save the day again soon. Wow, brain talking not working. Uh, we'll get that in a second. When I get this working, we'll be party three. So what are we breaking today? <laughs> Welcome, Street Rat. I'm trying to connect uh, and speak to um, the Streamlabs API, which is out here. We're just kind of basically throwing stuff at it. We have no documentation, so we're, it's kind of a little bit black boxian, and we are uh, throwing data out, seeing what comes back, and making changes. Uh, the latest changes we're doing now is we realized, well, we were sending some data out, and it said, you're sending too much. These, these are all things you cannot send. And so what we're doing is we're putting these in the descendant class and everything else is going up above. So what do we have here? Modified at name, we get to move up to the top. Name. We have modified at normalized name, obtainable order, rarity, rarity card probability, up here and rarity image URL. We keep down here set ID. Right there. And status. We keep down keep up here. So this is the descendant class right here. Update view card model. Set um, card view model. Is a descendant of that. I have a slight problem with the name of it because set here, this is a noun, but it looks like it's a verb because that's a verb right there. Um, let's maybe rename this one down here. Let's call this the set card view model, set card update view model, like that. That's what we're going to do. What's this problem? Set card view model. It's just, this is it. It's the only one. I think that's an. This doesn't make sense to me. I think that's an erroneous error. And I get the feeling it's about to clear itself up. Yeah, it looks like it cleared itself up. Okay, so we've got set card update view model back in the client. Now what we need to do. Um, is we kind of need to clone it is what we need to do. So adding cards should be a list of the set card update view model. That's what we're sending into it. Uh, get new cards need to return a bunch of those right there, there and there. And then we need something along the lines like this, where we're going to say, um, uh, this is our updated test card is equal to a uh, prototype dot uh, get update maybe better to do this instead um, let's do this let's make it give it a constructor like that and then we're gonna call this and do that. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna add it, the card to the results, and then we're done. Uh, let's go create this constructor that's just gonna basically copy over the properties that are, um, that are there. And we're going to say um, I created a template and I just totally forget the name of this template. 
you should copy properties from one instance over to clone or something along those lines. Uh, do I have something in here called clone? Um, well, I know I've got my custom templates in here. I shouldn't have a whole lot of these in here. Oh, this was to create everything to a, to JavaScript is what this was. Yeah, so that was kind of cool. Um, okay, that's for XAML development right there. Looks like I don't have this. Wait, what's this? Ooh. Let's try that. XFR. And let's kill all of this because these are just already the properties already here. That's what I wanted to do. Um, there's some things here like the reward fields. They're not really, we're not really cloning these lists. We're just reassigning them. But I think I'm okay here because this is primarily just used for prototyping. Uh, and, uh, and, that, and that's all. So let's run that and see if we get our new super cool card or if we get another error coming in here. Okay, so there we go. We've got our updated test card here, hopefully without those pieces. Oh, did I forget? I think I'm still gonna get an error errors because I still, what I had, the drop limit, the fragments were problematic and redemption limit. I think I'm gonna have those still coming back. All right, what do we got now in our error? Okay. So we're down to that. So drop limit fragments. I think drop limit must be larger or equal to one only if it exists is kind of my new theory is that the error shouldn't because um, or fragments actually fragments drop limit. Yeah, I think my drop limit is zero. What is it? Let's see what my drop limit is. Coming in here on the new cards. Drop limit is zero. I think so my theory is this, is that if drop limit is specified, if it appears, then it is, um, then it's going to error. But if it's excluded, it'll be fine and consider it zero. That's what I think. This, this, this drop limit must be larger than or equal to one. I think only makes sense. Um, it only makes sense. If that, if that theory I presented is, is uh, correct, that they're only in checking the value, they're only checking the value, or they're only validating the field if it's actually specified in the JSON. So my theory is if I remove drop limit from the string that's generated, we'll get rid of this error. To test that, uh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into that, uh, this update view model And I'm gonna take out drop limit, essentially. Um, and it'd be nice if I could JSON ignore it only if it were zero, but um, but all right, so we'll we'll do this. We'll take it out of here for a second. 
and I'll put it in uh, here. Just for a moment, see what happens. Okay, start it. So now if we, all of a sudden the drop limit goes away as the error message, then that theory is, uh, seems to be reinforced and is likely to be true. So new cards, we should now see no drop limit in this list here. What? What are we wrong? What am I doing wrong here? I don't understand how drop limit shows there. Oh, whoa. Okay. Thought it was in the other place. My bad. Okay, that's why it shows up there. All right. Oh, I see what, why I thought that was the deal. All right, we're going to test by putting it here. Yeah. All right, we're good. All right, save that. And I also have to do this. If that's the case, then I'll do the same thing with the fix on fragments, I think. So I really don't want to, uh, I don't want to deal with uh, fragments for any of the cards that I can think of. Hey, Mark. That looks like that was it. We don't see the drop limit error here anymore. What you got for me? Uh, you can make it nullable and Jason and tell Jason to ignore the, ignore the nulls. Ah. Cool. Uh, let's look at that as a possibility. Um, okay, so that, so we saw back in the, in the results from that, that the drop limit error was gone. Um, that's what we were looking for. Um, let's go. Let's get our drop limit back in, make it nullable. All of these that we're getting the errors for, we will make them nullable. And how do we do that? What is it? It's a JSON attribute. I take it right here. JSON ignore or something like that. Let's see if we can get the uh, right namespace inside of here. JSON. Must be something when we serialize it. Ser yeah, okay. Setting on the serializer. All right, so we're going to make drop limit nullable. Um, what's my problem here? It does, it should totally get it. Cannot navigate to that. I can get to the prototype. It's public. Oh, it's not in there. It's up in here. It's a little tricky to get all this to get all this right. All right, so there's that goes there. Okay, let's go back to the client. Look at the other errors we had. Drop limit fragments. Same issue with fragments. Make it nullable. And Good. And redemption limit must be an object. I'm not sure about redemption limit. Let's just make it nullable is what we'll do. Nope, we can't do it nullable because it's an object. Redemption limit. 
Uh, I'm going to set it to null. Is what I think I'll do. Is I'll set it to null in our client code. So up here, we do the get new card. I'm going to say updated test card dot redemption limit. I'm going to set it to null. Um, and let's also set the drop. Oh, this is here. They're a good friend. I see a sneak in this time. Couldn't get in. Okay, I'll be careful. Oh. Very crafty. How you doing, Wicked Blue Ninja? Rut row, bad timing. No, you're good. It's totally fine. Uh, so I'm setting drop limit to null. What's my other problem? Fragments to null. I think that's going to work. Fragments equal to null. So I'm setting those three folks that are errors coming back to null because we are. It's basically giving us validation issues on them. Uh, it doesn't like our version of the of our serialization for the redemption limit. Um, so I'm like, all right, fine. Um, Somehow we've messed that up. Uh, but let's see. I need to serialize this. Serialize bytes. Serialize object. This is where I'm going to tell it uh, to ignore nulls on this. No. Let's go figure it out. Jason serialize object, Jason convert serialize object. Ignore. What you got? Oh, look at you, Coding Gorilla. It's like, I bet Coding Gorilla is trying to help me out right now. Um, and do I get the settings in here? Sweet. There it is right there. Okay, let's try running. See what we get. Holy cow. We're trying to add a card to the Streamlinks deck is what we're trying to do. Ooh, we got a 200. Send us back some data. My new super cool card. I think it worked, kids. Holy cow, did we finally get it? Let's go look over. Um, where is it? Here we go. So we're looking for it, like probably showing up at the end over here. It's gonna look like this card. Let's do a refresh and see what happens. But instead of saying Puppet Master, ooh, someone came in here. There it is right there. Sweet. So the image, we could not specify the image. It said, sorry, you can't do that. But we did get this data right here. And presumably we'd be able to do all the other data uh, as well, um, including the fields. The fields all came up, which was excellent. And the message came up, that's excellent. This is all for copied from the other cards, but it's all the data there. Uh, that's going to call for some dance music right there, dance party. Wow, 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 wow. That doesn't last long enough. Uh, Wicked Blue Ninja, Ninja says, that is awesome. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's really good. Um, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Coding Gorilla. Also, thanks to you, Coding Gorilla, 
uh, for helping me out all the way through this. We finally got to point of traction. We finally have the ability to add a custom card, uh, which is gonna save in a lot of data entry because a lot of this data is um, something we can calculate. So that's all good. Let's uh, figure out, uh, I'm gonna end the show on that. Let's uh, figure out who out there is uh, streaming in the wide, wonderful world of the live coders. Uh, I'm such a huge fan of Oh Bother. That's where I'd be spending my time if I had it. Uh, I'm gonna send you over to the Oh Bother right now. Um, thanks so much, everybody. Uh, have a good rest of your day. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow with Kids Code and uh, Saturday as well. Uh, which tomorrow we're gonna be working on uh, visualizing uh, the volume of a sphere in three dimensions uh, with a, essentially an estimated uh, way of doing that by stacking cylinders in it. Getting close there. Um, yeah, thanks, Wiki Blue Ninja. Uh, thanks, Real McCoy. Uh, uh, who else? Uh, Puddings out there. Uh, we'll see you kids uh, tomorrow. <laughs>